a couple days ago on Twitter, I posted up this poll on my Twitter account because I was very curious. I just wanted to see what the results would be and just give my like my like commentary about both of these and why the results are the way that they are and give my take on why both of them are heavily misused. So I posted up on Twitter on December 29th, 2021, and I left this poll up for 24 hours. So it ran from 12.32 a.m. Uh, December 29th to 12.32 a.m. December 30th. And these were the results. I said, most misused slash abuse quote. The first one I said, MLK, I have a dream speech and the Malcolm X black woman unprotected speech. Now keep in mind that when I talk about quotes, I mean that the quotes that came from both of these speeches, both of these were speeches. These were both speeches that had long, you know, long narratives behind them. But it's certain points or parts of each speech that were picked apart by certain people that got abused and misused and bastardized. And as you can see by the results, the MLK I Have a Dream speech won by pretty much a landslide with 68.3% of the vote and the Malcolm X Black Women Unprotected got 31.7%. Now, people was at saying both. It's a reason why I did not suggest both when it came to this is because if I put both, I knew it would have been one sided and both most likely would have won. I wanted them to be separate. So I'm le I'm actually going to be giving my my take on why both of them will qualify for being mi um, most misused and abused. But let's start off with the obvious. The MLK I Have a Dream speech is heavily misused, especially by PC. PC loves to misuse, misquote, and abuse the hell out of this this uh speech and only certain parts of the speech i bet you if you ask any pc person about or to recite this entire speech they couldn't do it but they'll swear up and down mlk was this and mlk was that but if you looked at his approval ratings back in the day mlk was like one of the most hated people in america like through and through hell you even had the government take him out you had him he had him eliminated and his family took the the uh, the government to court in the late 90s and won yes we know who the person responsible but he was hired by the government to take him out when mlk went from the i have a dream route to the i'm coming to get our check route then that's when they had to get rid of him but they love to misuse and overuse this quote and not even so much as overuse it but just abuse it it's like okay we get it but we know why they're doing it. They're trying to make it. Basically, they made a martyr out of him. And they're trying their hardest to um, try to soften, not so much soften the blow, but to get us to be quiet. They try to use MLK as the safe Negro to keep the Negroes in line. And they always use the I have a dream speech. They don't use any other speech. Keep in mind, I have a dream while that is his most famous speech. Is not the only speech this man has ever gave. This guy was a pastor, so he was known to talk and have a powerful voice. I don't know any soft-spoken pastors. But he had several speeches before this and after. But it was that last one he gave about coming to get the check and the integrating his people into a burning building that they don't talk about. That's the one they love to leave out. And the thing is, they overuse this uh, speech or the quote or certain quotes from the speech so much you would think that this was the only speech that this man has ever gave when we know that is not true that to be honest pc has bastardized this speech so much that it actually caused a lot of black people to not like mlk i'm gonna be completely honest i don't think people don't like mlk because of what he stood for it might be that case because it was some black people back then that probably did not like what he stood for but because of PC and how over bastardized they have made his image, not just the speech, but his image, it has caused a lot of black people to not like him. And that is unfortunate because no matter how you feel about this man, he definitely holds a place in black history, black American history. That's without a doubt. He's one of the most recognizable figures of our time. Well, of, of, our, of black history of, of our time. Let's put it like that of our time. But because they muddled it and distorted his image, it makes you not want to like him. And they are known to do that with a lot of our heroes or a lot of the people who carry legacies. 
They couldn't do that with Malcolm X because they said he was too radical, so they didn't really care about him. So they don't really talk about him. I, to be honest, I was actually shocked when I saw a lot of PCE talk about Malcolm X, be, uh, mainly because, you know, of the talking point with politics and liberals and stuff like that. But that's as far as they'll go with it. But with MLK, when it comes to racism, they go overboard with it. And we can see the fakeness from a mile away. They wouldn't dare bring up Malcolm X. After all, Malcolm X doesn't have a holiday for his on his birthday, which is May 19th, 2000. Um, I'm sorry, May 19th. I know this because he is a tourist like myself. I feel honored to share a Zodiac sign with a legendary pioneer. But when it came to MLK, they gave him a holiday that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. And that's not by accident. That just gives them even more reason to bastardize his image even more. Every time something happens, they got to bring up MLK. They got to bring him up. They got to bring him up and bring up something from the I have a dream speech. And it's usually the same thing about the content of our character and I judging and all that good stuff. And that's as far as they'll go. They cannot recite that entire speech. They can't even recite half of it. They probably can't even recite one paragraph. But they'll know that part because that's the part that they want in, um, in, um, drilled into your head constantly over and over. That's the part that they want so bad. Now that I've gotten onto the MLK part, let's talk about the Malcolm X black women unprotected one. And this one right here, some people was kind of upset that this one didn't have more votes or the votes weren't close. Now, this one right here is mainly only used by black women. Only black women, I rarely ever see any other group mention this, mainly because a lot of other groups don't care about Malcolm X. Like I said, PC just started talking about him like last year, and it was only for their own agenda as usual. But when it comes to the black women being unprotected and everything like that, you have to think when Malcolm X made that speech, that was during that time. That was back in what, the 60s? In the early 60s? Because he died like in the mid 60s. So it was in the 60s. You got to think it was at that time and it was for that climate. A lot of the black women who keep praising this speech or that part of the quote, and keep in mind, they're doing the same thing that MLK, the people with MLK do. They only pick apart the part that they like or the part that they want to um, push their narrative. And I tried to ask somebody, could they send me the whole speech? Because someone said that they heard the whole speech and that whenever they hear black women talk about the unprotected thing, they roll their eyes at it because it's more to that speech than what they put out there but let's be honest if malcolm x was alive today a lot of these women out here who love to talk about malcolm x and you know this part of the speech they would have nothing but contempt for him honestly but because he said that line they will love him but that's probably as far as the love will go just like with mlk with white people that part in the i have a dream speech is as far as the support and love they'll get he'll get other than that after that maybe even before that it's cut off now i know i kind of jumped a little bit into the similarities a little bit too uh fast um I'm, let me i'm gonna try to scale it back and then go into that even more but with a, a go, again with the black women unprotected if he was alive today and could see how some of these black women act especially the ones that peddle this part of the speech he would he would shake his head he would have to do a follow-up he, I don't know what the speech would even sound like, unfortunately, because he's, you know, he was assassinated. Much like MLK. But they peddled that and they love to peddle that speech towards black men in particular. Whenever they say the black woman's unprotected, we know that's a jab at black men. They're not talking about anybody else but us. We're not stupid. At least I know I'm not. I can read between the lines. I, I know a subliminal messaging when I see it. They don't have to say it. Just like when white people talk about I have a dream, that's a dig at us. Now, that's as, at, bl at black people as a whole. Not just the man, the woman, or the child. That's everybody to try to get us to stop calling out their crap and their BS. But when it comes to that black woman unprotected thing from Malcolm X, that's a dig at black men for sure you can't tell me otherwise but if you really look and examine what he was talking about he was saying that black women aren't protected from other groups of people 
Because at a time, you got to think, at that time, and even maybe before that, we were very close-knit. Black men were there and still are, despite how many of them think otherwise. Look at what's going on with all these divestors and all these stories popping up of PC men going after and attacking these women, and some of them end up dead. That's where you think your your you th that's where you think your protection lies. Granted, there are some bad in the community, but it's not everybody. But they'll have you believe that it is. The and also speaking of divestors, this black woman unprotected that is their favorite quote. That part right there is their favorite part of the quote of the speech because it was a speech. That is their favorite part. If they don't take anything else from that, that is what they will consume and that is what they will take. And that is what they will hold on to. Without a doubt. I know I kind of like jumbled in the similarities in there a little bit and I, I shouldn't have jumped around like that. So I wouldn't confuse the listener, but I just had it like, you know, it was there. And, and the thing is, if I didn't mention it, then I probably would have forgot to mention it later. But yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Or some similarities between both of these speeches. The only real difference is is who's who's peddling them. And then sometimes, if certain groups of people don't feel like they have a hold on, uh, I guess you could say, black women, they'll peddle out this part of the speech for them. And where do you think they got it from? Many of them didn't watch or listen to Malcolm X like that. They got it from the 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 messengers. And we know who the messengers are. So the similarities is that both of these groups have misused and abused both of these quotes simultaneously and almost instantly against black people. It's just one is in particular against black men. The other is against black people as a whole. And they feel like they do that to try to diffuse a situation. Hell, like I said, the, 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 the divestors love using that quote. Hell, I'm sure they probably use that when all these women who was messing around with these PC men started coming up dead. And then they'll use it to throw it onto black men. And what's so sad about it is both of these speeches have very important lessons in them, but they become distorted when people bastardize it to the point where no one wants to even read it. Or listen to it, I should say, because both of these speeches were given through word. But I'm sure you can find the text online. I'm almost certain of it. And that's a shame because it's coming from two pioneering, powerful, alpha black men who probably would be hated by some of the community if they were both still alive today. But when their legacies get bastardized through these speeches, this is what happens. But that's pretty much all I want to come on here and discuss. Y'all let me know what y'all think.